In this lesson, we're going to start concentrating more on the file system rather than the disk hardware. We're going to start out with the top level of the file system, and then later in the next lesson or two, we'll move down a little deeper into the file system. These next three lessons kind of go together, so I will sum up with a reference at the end of these three lessons. So here I am on my Mac, and I want to show you at the top level of your system volume, there are some default folders. Double clicking on the Macintosh HD, we see Applications, Library, System, and Users. You may see more than this if your computer has been in use for a while and you've installed some things. If it's been around for a long time and upgraded, you might even see something like a Developer folder. But these are the four standard ones that pretty much everybody should see. The Applications folder is, of course, a place where applications are stored, but these applications will be available to the local computer domain. Everybody on this computer will be able to run applications that are located inside the Applications folder, unless there's some other restrictions that we're not going to get into in this lesson. Then we have a Library folder. This is a place for resources, things as different as desktop pictures and log files. We also have a system folder, and that's exactly what it is. It's the operating system. It is a place where you really should not make any changes on your own. This is for Apple to manage, and it's where Apple puts its operating system. Then we also have a users folder. This view that we're looking at right here is, in my opinion, a little hard to explain what's going on. So I'm gonna switch over to columns view, and then I'm going to push my window to the left make it a little larger to the right. And I'm going to leave the icons of the disks visible because I want to show you something there. I'm going to use the go command to go to a new folder. And that folder is going to be called slash volumes. And I'm going to press return. Notice that this applications library system and users folders is now joined by a volumes folder. And the volumes are the names of our disk volumes that we formatted in a previous lesson. These actually are located as part of the file system. And the only one that's the odd man out is the Macintosh HD, which is our system startup volume. Notice that it's got a little bitty arrow. In fact, if I use the Get Info window, we can see that this is a kind of alias. And really what it's pointing back to is the original location highlighted here of slash. That's called the root of the file system. More about that when we talk about the command line, but just know that you can always go into volumes and see what disk volumes or even network volumes are connected to your computer. We also have some hidden folders other than the volumes folder. So let me go back to the go menu, say go to folder again, and I'm going to type in slash private. Now this will show us the private folder, and inside the private folder are four other important folders, Etsy, TFTP boot, which is not that important really for our discussion, and TMP and VAR. ETC holds a bunch of configuration files. They are typically Unix type configuration files, but Apple has put some of its own flavor of files on there, like the one I just highlighted. Temp is really a place for cache files, temporary files, that sort of stuff. Var is a place for variable information like log files. So if you go to var log, you'll see all sorts of log files. Now it's not the only place for log files, but it is a traditional Unix type of path to log files. I have also provided you in your lesson materials some script commands that we're going to use to see a whole bunch of hidden files that are at the top level of our computer. Let's go back to Macintosh HD, just highlight that. And notice that we still see the private and volumes right now. If I were to close the Finder window and double click on it, they'd be gone. So we'd have to say go to folder to get them there again. Now for troubleshooting purposes only, you could use something like the scripts that I provided. One is show all files yes command, and the other is show all files no command. Just double click on the show all files yes command. It should bring up the terminal automatically and run. If it doesn't, if it warns you that this was downloaded from the internet or copied from some insecure place, 
you're going to have to do a right click or secondary click on it and say open and then run it with the terminal that way. So let's go back here to the Macintosh HD window, close it, nothing's happened yet, double click on Macintosh HD icon and notice all the hidden stuff that has now become visible. Now don't mess around with any of this because bad things will happen usually. Notice that a lot of these grayed out items have really weird Unixy type names. SBIN, BIN, CORES, Mock Kernel, NET, and so on. So be careful using something like this. It's okay for troubleshooting purposes, but when you're done, change it back. And here's how I would change it back with my little script that says show all files no. Double click that, let it run. No changes in the finder window yet. We have to actually close Macintosh HD and reopen it again to get back to the state where we just see the applications, library, system, and users folder. So now you know that there is a world of files and folders that are hidden from the user, and this just keeps the complexity level low for the average person. If you need to see them, you can use something like the scripts that I have provided in order to turn on the hidden files and turn them off, or as Apple puts it, show all files yes or show all files no. So next up, we're going to start looking at the user home folders. And to do that, we're going to need some more users other than just this one admin user I have. So I'm going to go into my system preferences, users and groups, and I'm going to create a new user. So I have to click on the lock, authenticate as the local admin, click on the plus, and fill out the information for a new user. Then I click on create user. And it may take a moment, usually it's pretty quick. And now we have Hugh created and ready to go to the next lesson.